guys. So today I'm going to show you my latest project. I'm planning on going on an overnight backpacking trip uh, up in uh, Virginia there. We're going to go uh, a little bit on the Appalachian Trail, but we're going to hit the White Oak Canyon Trail and we're going to hit the uh, Old Nag Trail. And so we're going to go like three days, two nights up there and we're going to be doing that in October here. And basically I got a hammock set up that I'm going to do, but I've got a Hennessy hammock uh, that's got a, a classic bottom entry. Um, and I'm looking for the options to basically stay warm at night. Um, that time of year, looks like the, the weather average low was around, I think, 40. So that means, you know, average low is 40. It could be in the 30s. It could be in the 50s. But anyway, I uh, wanted to figure that out. And there's all these different things out there. So I started doing some research online because I'm kind of done a lot of day hiking stuff, but not uh, any really overnight backpacking trips. So I'm looking forward to it. But in the idea of keeping warm at night, you got several options. Obviously, your sleeping bag, of course, but when you're in a hammock and you're laying on a sleeping bag, right, you compress all the loft in the bottom of that sleeping bag, so there's no insulation value. Um, so, I've heard the term CBS uh, is what you get from doing that, which is cold butt syndrome. But basically, so you can get a, a thermal pad to lay under you, and there's issues with those. There's some hammocks that are made to slide a thermal pad in there. Um, but one of the things that keeps popping up is an underquilt. And so, um, I've got enough money into all this stuff right now that I just don't want to go out and spend money on a big expensive underquilt <coughs> because they're, they're not exactly cheap. And I was looking on a, a website called Hammock Forms, hammockforms.net. And there's just a wealth of information uh, on that site. And there's a do-it-yourself column in there. And I ran across a section where, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but the, the user is LavoyaNet. And I think that's how it's pronounced, but I could be wrong. But anyway, the, that user, uh, gratefully put out some plans for a no-sew underquilt design and they called it the Gemini hammock underquilt and they've got everything laid out and you can go to the hammockforms.net go into the DIY forum and you can find the, the Gemini underquilt heading and it's just pages and pages and pages of comments and people that have have made these and used it and uh, everybody uh, gives it very favorable reviews so I thought hey I'll go ahead and do that so if you look at the website or go to the hammockforms.net, there's a link there to the Voyanet's page where they have the, the whole write-up of this, and I'll show you that here. <clears throat> so the biggest challenge for me is, uh, as far as what you, and you don't need a whole lot, first of all. You need these two underquilts, and these are specific underquilts, okay, or two blankets, if you will, these down throws. These come from Costco. They're, they're double black diamond brand, and the qualities of these, you can kind of read through the website and look at them, but the qualities of these make them ideal uh, for setting this kind of thing up. But basically, all you need are the two blankets. These are packables, so they're very light, they're going to compress down for me. You need some shock cord. Now, when you first read through the forums, it said to use 1 16th inch shock cord, and later on they revised it and said to use 1 32nd, and people confirmed that that is ideal. So, 1 32nd shock cord. You need something I never knew about, some snap cam pliers. I've never done this before, but basically it looks like it just creates buttons, if you will, but snap buttons, if you will. Um, so there's no sewing involved in this design, which is really good because I can't sew. And then you need some gross grain, which is basically like a, a ribbon. And they recommend it half inch, but best I could come up with was 5 eighths, so we're going to go with it. And along with these, these snap cams, you have all these, these little buttons, if you will. And I guess you use the tool to snap these in place. and. Uh, and we'll see a little bit about that. And then you also need two rings, all right? And we're gonna go through the process of, of building this underquilt. So, and it's really cool the way uh, they designed this underquilt is you're using two of these down throws. And so when it's not as cold out, you can just use one as an underquilt. When it's colder out, you can use, well actually you can use one as an underquilt and one as an overquilt. And then if you want to, when it's a little colder, you can double them up and, and they'll snap together with the snaps you'll see. And it'll be a double, uh, uh, down under quilt and then when it's even colder than that <clears throat> there's a pattern where you take the second layer under quilt and you fold it a certain way so if you're laying uh, asymmetrically in your hammock it'll match your pattern and you'll have basically three layers at that point underneath you to keep you warm so um, I'm gonna walk you through how to do this on the video here and I'm not taking any credit for the design at all uh, this the void net put it out there and I, I'm very thankful for them and a lot of uh, good feedback on the hammock forums uh, dot net so check that out but the first thing we have to do is, um, is, is rip the seams on the horizontal lines on these, uh, these throws because we're trying to make long baffles uh, so the loft can build up a little higher to have more insulation value. And like I said, the, the, what I was going to say, the biggest challenge 
was getting these blankets because these are from Costco and I can find these on eBay and they're twice the price and I'm not a Costco member. So I had to find a friend who's on Costco, found them uh, to order them for me. There were no color choices. The only thing they had was purple. So my underclothes going to be purple. So okay, we'll get started on uh, the first thing we got to do, which is uh, ripping the seams. And supposedly this is really what takes the longest. And I can kind of see why, because the thread is very fine. And you will need a seam ripper tool. So these are seam ripper tools. I've never used a seam ripper tool. But I've got some crafty people in my family that have used a seam ripper tool. And I'm going to try to talk them into doing this for me. So uh, we'll see how far that goes. So anyway, I'll show you what we got to do here to start with. And we'll go from there. So basically, this is the, the website to kind of give you an idea of what we're talking about here. Uh, you're going to have your hammock, then you're going to have one layer, and then your second layer of the underquilt. And like I said, this website lays out all the details that you need as far as all the equipment, how to do it, and so forth. I just want to put it in video format to be helpful to anybody that wants to, to watch the video of it. And if you have any questions about, well, can I do this or not kind of thing. So, um, LavoyeNet.com. I'll put a link down there uh, to the website and to the um, hammockforums.net as well. All right, so I can already tell you that this is going to be the most laborious part of this project is taking these horizontal seams out of here. Uh, it's very tedious. But basically, I don't know if you can see this. It's really hard to tell what's what, but I've already started a little bit. But basically, with a seam ripper, you want to come in just underneath the stitch like that, that, and just cut it like that. And then what you do, it'll just pull right out. And... Uh, you just kind of work the theme. Sometimes you can't go so far. Like I went too far probably on that one. So I'm going to come in the middle here and cut it. And then after you do that, you pull, pull out the stitching here. And you're just going to continue. That one's already ripped there. Working your way down. Yeah, see how it just comes right out. And there's basically on the top and on the bottom, I guess there's two threads all together, I guess. That's what I think is going on here. And then, uh, yeah, it's going down the bottom. And basically, we got to do this for every horizontal seam. And we have to do this for both blankets. So, or both throws. So, um, this is going to be fun. So, I'm going to spare y'all the tedium of watching me do this whole thing. So, when I come back to you, all these threads will be gone. On both blankets. And then we'll get to the funner part of doing the camp snaps. But basically what we're doing is we're getting rid of this horizontal seam. So when we're done, all the horizontal seams will be gone. And we're going to have a big, long baffle that we can uh, push the, build the loft up a little higher. So that's the point of doing this piece of it. All right. Well, we've done the seam ripping. And I'll just tell you, it wasn't very fun. Okay. But this is the short side of the quilt right here, or the blanket. And uh, this is where there's still a seam. And all these seams have been ripped. So basically what you've got are these big long baffles going all the way down the blanket now to uh, basically let the loft build up and give you a little bit more warmth. So that's what's going on. So on the short side here, we're going to have to make attachments on each one of these points here. And basically we're going to hang a clue, which is basically some cordage that's going to draw this whole thing in when it hooks to your uh, hammock system. So to do that, we need to use some gross grain according to the instructions that I'm working with. And uh, basically we need to take this uh, gross grain and and I think they said to use half an inch on there, but basically all we can find was five eighths when we went to get it, and I think it's kind of close enough. So that's what we're going to use. And uh, a little bit cool thing about this is um, there's a little place up in Pennsylvania where my dad was born. And I still have relatives up there today. And it's just a small town with a couple factories in it. And by golly, we picked this up at Walmart, and it's from Berwick, Pennsylvania. A little small town there. So anyway, pretty cool because I've been there and I know where that's at. So what I've done is I've made a little little four inch uh, measuring thing and I'm just gonna basically cut this thing into four inch strips, which is what we need. And just get me 26 of these is what I need to do. And then we will uh, prepare the ribbon and then we'll show you how we're gonna attach these on there. So I got 24 more to do, so I'm not going to film the whole thing. All right, so I've got all my gross grain, my four. And by the way, I had no clue what gross grain was until I figured this out. But basically, it's like this ribbon kind of stuff. But anyway, after you cut all this ribbon, the threads might come loose and everything. So what you want to do is you could use a, you know, a match or a lighter or 
or it's kind of like when you cut rope, you got to burn the ends of it to keep it together. But uh, my daughter's got this little wood burner thing. So basically the whole bar on this wood burner gets hot. So I'm just going to touch it there and seal those ends good on both all this uh, cross grain. So they're not going to run on me when I attach it out. There we go. And uh, that's basically what we're going to do. So we're going to go through all these now and fix the ends. And... Um, and then once that's done, then we'll show you how we attach them to the uh, to the down blanket. All right. So the purpose of the cross grain here is we're making an attachment for the clues, which again this is the end of the blanket, and there's going to be cordage cordage coming out from each one of these some snap cord we're using, and uh, and that's going to kind of pull the end of the uh, the blanket together around your hammock. So basically, I've already done one. And this is basically what it looks like here. Here's how the attachment's made. This is so you don't have to go, you know, stitching and sewing a bunch of stuff. So we're using these uh, cam snap pliers with these things called cam snaps. They're like plastic buttons, if you will, with a cross, cross grain. And basically, you'll run your, your clue through this piece, and this will snap over it and snap shut. And so we're putting one of these attachments on each one of these uh, seams here, going down the blanket, where we'll attach this stuff to. So I have, first of all, I never knew what, Cross grain was before in my life. I've never heard of snap cam, snap cam pliers, so uh, these are them. It just comes in a little kit. It was like I don't know, 15, 20 bucks. It came with the with the pliers and like a hundred assorted uh, colors of these these snap. All right, so try to show you up close what's going on here. Um, so we're gonna first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this over about a half an inch, and at a half an inch there, we are going to flip the blanket over. We're going to put it to the last half inch of the next seam here. I'm going to have it folded just like that. I'm going to take my awl. And with my awl, we're going to run right through the whole thing, the blanket and everything. Okay? Run all the way through there. Because what I'm finding out is just uh, the down blanket really wants to fill that hole real fast. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a the snap cap. So here's the snap cap. This is the, uh, the actual cap, you see there's a little uh, rod in there, and we're going to run that through uh, the hole we just created with the awl. So I'm going to pull this out, run it through there, alright, and it's sticking up through there, alright. So now, so you kind of see the caps going through, it's going through here, and what we're going to do is we're going to put what they call a socket on this part. So this is what the socket looks like, I don't know if you can see that here or not. This is what the socket looks like. And basically, we're going to lay the socket right over that stud where it sits right in to where we just did this. Now, this is where we use a snap cam, uh, snap cam pliers. So this little black piece here is a die that the, the actual cap right here fits into. So it's going to slide right into that cap. And then we're going to come down and get it locked in place like that. We're going to give it a good squeeze. Come undone. And now that basically flattens that rod down and holds that uh, the socket in place. So now we're going to do the same to this other side, except we're going to fold over about an inch on this one. <clears throat> and we're going to run the all through about a quarter inch back from that. And again, get it all good through there. I'm going to get another, doing another one of these with the, with the, uh, the caps again. Okay, with the studs there. So let's hold this in place. I'm going to pull that out. Try to get through my hole there. I'm not the crafty one here, so uh, there we go. I'm getting it through the hole there. All right, so I've got the the uh, piece through the hole, the, the the cap through the hole now. And this time, instead of the socket, I'm going to use what's called the stud. And this is what that looks like. So let's see here if you can see that. So I'm going to now take the stud. And put it over what we just did, and we're going to put this into our cam snap pliers and do the exact same thing. Get lined up and push it down. There we go. All right. Now that's fixed there. So the idea is our our, our shock cord is going to run between here, and we're going to put this snap this uh, flap that we made over it. Now the if you've done a good if you've done the good uh, stud and socket, the way you tell is it makes a snap noise when you put them together. And it made a snap noise. Very good. And we got the little pull tab pulling apart when we're ready. So um, that's basically what you do uh, with these snap caps. Never even knew these things existed. So, I mean, I'm not 
I don't do this kind of craft stuff. I use my outdoor stuff, not this indoor crafty thing. So uh, I had to have my daughter help me figure some of this stuff out. But anyway, so we're going to go ahead and put the rest of these on, the rest of these seams, and get everything ready, and then we'll take you to the next step. All right, so now we've got all of our snap caps on the, uh, the bottom quilt. And by the way, this is the Gemini project here. has been named by the author of the design here. It wasn't me. Um, but uh, we've got different parts of this, and we're talking about the constellation Gemini. So the bottom quilt he calls Pollux, and the uh, inner quilt, um, which could also be used as a top quilt in, in warmer weather, is called Castor. And uh, so it kind of goes along with the theme of Gemini, the constellation Gemini, the brightest star in there, I think, is uh, one of those poster of uh, Castor or Pollux, one of them is the brightest star, but they're both stars in the constellation Gemini. So keep with that theme there. But what we're going to do now is we have to build the, the clues. Now, first of all, I didn't have a clue what a clue was. Um, but basically the clue is a suspension for a hammock. So we're going to build the clue that's going to be the suspension for the underquilt for the hammock. So to do that, that's why I wanted the, uh, the shot cord. And when you first look online the, the, in the in, uh, Hammock Forms uh, website, uh, about the do-it-yourself Gemini underquilt, it'll mention using 1 16th shot cord. And after you read through the comments, you'll see that the uh, initial designer now recommends 1 32nd. And it's also been confirmed by a lot of people that 1 32nd is the right, is the right uh, size to use. So that's what we have here. So I've got this jig. This wasn't made for this quilt. I uh, also like to play with making uh, archery stuff. And so I use this when I make a Flemish bowstring. All right, first thing I'm going to do is just take my my cordage here and I'm gonna do a slip knot. Grab that through. Got my little slip knot now. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and hook it on my <coughs> carabiner here. Okay, it's on here now. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that up. Tighten that right on down. Now. Alright, now we've got our excess over here. Ah. All right, now what we're going to do is we are going to, well, that's going to be a pain. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pull off enough of this uh, cordage here. We're going to loop around my post. We're going to keep things somewhat firm. But we're not going to stretch it all out because this is stretch cord here. And we are going to put the next one in here. All right. And this makes up our first nettle of the clue. Alright, so I'm going to cut this. <coughs> Some room to spare. Set this aside, and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and loop this through <clears throat> before I take anything apart. I'm going to go ahead and do a, uh, I'm going to go ahead and lash this together. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our two end pieces, and I'm just going to do a, from what I understand is just a, a uh, western country whipping. I'm not going to do anything fancy with it. We're, we just do an overhand knot on the front side, pull that down. And then we're going to come to the bottom side and do the same thing. So we come underneath it. I'm going to do another overhand knot. It's so, so hard to do with it on the thing here. Right now, top, another overhand knot. That's good at this point. So. <coughs> a couple things. It's good to have another pair of hands if you pull this thing off. So the next clue that I make, I think I'm going to leave them on the board and pull one strand off at a time and hook to the quilt because they get all tangled up really. But basically I've got a few here. I'm going to uh, unsnap my setup here and I'm going to run the nettle under it. Snap it back. So there's one on. The next one. Gonna snap it. <clears throat> Put the middle in there, snap it back. 
This is basically how we're attaching these guys. And this one off. And basically I'm gonna do this for each one of these nettles as we go down the line. Oops, I'm gonna skip some here. And really if you think about this, you think the 130 second shock cord is kind of light and all that kind of stuff, but really it's not holding any weight. It's just holding the weight of these blankets and these are really lightweight down uh, down blankets, so there's not a whole lot of weight to them. So I'm going to go ahead and hook the rest of these up for the suspension. That one snap. Yeah, okay. Just make sure I got a good connection there. All right, and oh, that snap cap's not very good. We're going to have to work on the snap cap. Um, there's a little tip if the snap caps don't snap good, you go back with the thing and you, you give it one more push uh, to get it a lot better. This is not locking good, so I'm going to redo this one. So. All right, well, I'm going to run the rest of them through here, and uh, we'll show you what it looks like when it's all hooked up, and then we're going to do the other side, and then we'll go to the next step uh, in the setup. All right, so basically here we're attached to the hammock, the, the suspension, the clue was a suspension system with all the nettles attached, and basically there's one end of it, and we're going to have to do the same to the other now. So uh, we'll do that and get that one hooked up, and then we'll move forward. All right, so one of the things I did is I've got some, uh, I guess, hair bands that the girls have. And I just put like three of them on here just to keep this on when ready. When I go to set up, I'll just slide all the hair bands up. But just to kind of keep this from all getting tangled uh, while we're working on everything else. Mm -hmm. 